G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. We are here on Forts. Take a look at this. We've got ourselves a close Fort spawn, which you know what that means. That means we're going to have action. Ladies and gentlemen, spawning in on the north side of the map in the color orange, playing as Jean of Arc. It's give you anxiety. And on the west corner of the map, the color teal, playing as the Byzantines. It's Kill Jardy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Forts. It is a pleasure to have your company. If you're enjoying this Age of Empires 4 content, make sure you go ahead, hit that like button. It really helps out with the traction of the videos. And of course, if I don't remind you, I know you're never going to do it. So thank you. Anyway, let's get to it because we have got ourselves a wonderful matchup. Two new civilizations, the Byzantines, Jean of Arc, the variant for the French. Let's get into it. Now, this matchup, it's a little bit interesting just because the Lament Knight are so strong. Naturally, with strong units, you want to make more of them. If you've got really good knights, you like to make knights. And that's exactly the problem that we've got here, because Joan of Arc has really strong knights. And Kiljardi on the Byzantines has really strong spears, the Lament Knight. And so you can naturally see where this matchup will go. So my question is going to be, how do we see Kiljardi play this? Does he look to play for that fast castle? Does he look to go in for a bit more of a feudal age. We know how Give You Anxiety is going to play it. We have seen this guy time and time again play. When he's when he's playing Age of Empires 4, there's one thing he's got on his mind, and that is giving anxiety to the opponent. Hopefully today he can avoid giving anxiety to himself. We've seen him do that time and time again when he doesn't go for walls. So we'll be on the lookout for those. And of course, Kiljardi. I'm expecting that we're probably going to be seeing a Grand Winery come down, but I think when it comes to the Grand Winery, it's quite important to have that positioned well, because you can throw it down here on the berries, but the reality is, if you don't get good value from that by having olive groves potentially around it, what's the point in even going for it? So Hippodrome can make a fair bit of sense here. Having the Hippodrome also means that once you do get into the Feudal Age, your, uh, your... Uh, horsemen are actually going to be coming out of the gate swinging pretty hard because of that extra little buff. But it is going to be the Grand Winery that comes down. Throws it in a bit of a sad spot. Uh, unfortunately, I don't... I, I feel like you probably could have fit it in here, but I guess he's just decided this is going to be the better spot. Especially because he knows the rough location of his opponent. He knows that they're towards that north corner, towards that east corner somewhere. Let's check in on the other side of the map as Give You Anxiety is going to be looking to put his landmark in almost exactly the same position relative to the town center. Both of them on this southeast side. Now, when it comes to aggression from the Kiljardi side, I think when it comes to when it comes to playing the Byzantines in particular, you can expect them to look to, to play one base. But we have seen two TC Byzantines be the case. But I suspect Kiljardi is probably going to know that he's up against Give You Anxiety. He's up against some very aggressive units and we'll be looking to try and capitalize on that on the defensive so we'll ride on board with him for a little bit four villages on the age up it will be quite a bit faster than gua's age up and have a look how early this age up is he's already halfway through only three minutes and 15 through in the town center gonna be able to take out the scout early on unfortunately for kiljardi he makes the assumption that his opponent was in that east corner didn't pay attention and now loses the scout and that is not a good way to start the game. Not only do you donate three sheep to your opponent, because these sheep, I promise you, they will be picked up by Kill or by uh, give you anxiety. Unless Kiljardi decides to actually switch into a scout from the town center, which he doesn't. You, you, there is a world where you can just quickly get a scout out and bring your scout over here and hope that your opponent's not really in the vicinity. Not the case here, though. Uh, so GUA is going to be picking up a couple of extra extra sheep here, but on top of that. He's also going to have that scouting advantage, and it means Kiljardi is going to be playing in the dark. So Kiljardi's just going to assume what GUA is going to do, which is kind of fortunate, right? Because I tell you what, if there's any player I'm up against on the ladder, uh, I'm not really too sure what they're up to, except if it's give you anxiety. I know what he's up to. This old this old guy, you got to watch out for him. He's going to be aggressive early on. But maybe he knows that people know that about him. Maybe he looks to switch things up. Outpost comes down. Looking to throw in the Grand Winery. We start to see that wheelbarrow on the way as well for Kiljardi. Looking to get that extra little bit of efficiency out of his berry patch. Keep in mind, doesn't have the system connected just yet to the Grand Winery. Which means that he's not going to have that extra little bit of uh, research speed helping him out. Playing in the dark at the moment. Still on that one base. Not, not even really looking to go into early barracks. I'm curious to see which direction he goes when it comes to mercenaries. Because I'm thinking probably Javelin makes sense. 
I, I really like the Javelin. We've seen Kiljati before look to utilize the Javelin on the Byzantines, and I'm I'm really impressed. The more I see the Javelins, the more I think maybe the Javelin is just the way to go. Because it's not only that they get really good bonus against archers, it's also that they get a really good bonus against crossbows. And that's one of the best units that we are seeing. Uh, I, maybe best isn't the right word for it. That's one of the most common units that we're seeing in combinations. Uh, crossbow Spear has been a really good combo for quite a long time. Uh, and I would expect that that is the direction that he looks to take it. But give you anxiety. Now, I'm going to be opening up with a single Royal Knight to start us off. Down towards that east corner, we've got Joan, who's beginning to work her way through. And he's gone into the Hunter. Uh, so not actually looking to go for the, uh, the Woman at Arms. So looking to mix things up a little bit here. Could work out for him in the long run. But early on, it's going to be tough for him. The boar potentially uh, has the ability to, to do quite a bit of damage. Now... GUA, I don't think he's used the Divine Arrow here. Just going to be able to quite literally hunt his way through. Scout does spot out the outpost. You can see that he throws a couple of villagers into the outpost just to get a couple of extra attacks off. And now taking out that boar. He's got a great little position here. You can see that this is definitely a, a, a wonderful spot if you're thinking about going for a second TC. Nice and close. Uh, and this is exactly where you want to expand. And I think that's one of the things that I'm slowly learning to love about forts. It starts off as this map where you're very close to your opponent. So rush distances are short, but you've got this fort that protects you. It's a natural fort. It means you can throw walls up if, if you are the walling type. And most importantly, it means that you've got all this map to play with. If your opponent looks to box you in, you're going to be having a tough time. But if you do start to move out onto the map, if you look to try and take control, it, it leaves the entire map to have fun. And I, that's what I like about it. Scout once again. Looking to try and find a way through a couple of olive groves going down here for Kiljati. We'll check back in over on the side of GUA as a second stable's come up. Hold on a minute. I'm starting to see a pattern here. You guys will remember. There was a game that we watched recently where Beastie went to go for a knight-only challenge. A royal knight-only challenge. Lament and I on the backside. Going to be a little bit ringing around the rosy as the villager will go down. He's going to trade out a royal knight for a villager. Oh, manages to keep the knight alive. Okay, I'll take that trade. GUA doing... Very, very well there. Looking to clean up the second boar now as well. He's already taken out the first one. Uh, keep in mind, the boar uh, has half experience. And I'm pretty sure they actually changed it. So you don't get experience from wolves anymore. I'd have to double check my notes on that one. But 99% sure that is the case. So that's going to be tough for GUA. We'll have to wait and see exactly how he looks to play. I suspect he might even come around the backside and look to get a little bit of a snipe off on this gold vein. He's taken out one worker so far. Nice little bait on the Lament and I. It's been very, very cheeky. Ooh, did you see that? He actually manages to get the charge damage through. I don't know how that happened, but he will lose the scout. Pulls back one of the injured Royal Knights. Probably could have left it for a little bit longer. I don't know why he's not focusing down the second Lament and I. He is going to lose that knight, though. So not the best opening here. Plenty of, of Lament and I coming out for him. And you can see just how fast those Lament and I are. Trying their best to get some tags on those Royal Knights. Second stable is up behind this GUA. Going Castle Age of all the things... Why the second stable, though? Why the second stable? Now coming in on the backside, the Hunter immediately comes out. One attack throws down the the uh, the Divine Arrow as well. Going to be able to pick off that villager. Second Divine Arrow comes out. He's actually got one ready to go. He could just... Yeah, he's rocketed it off. There we go. Three workers taken out already. GUA on the backside. Very cheeky, very sneaky. And look at this kill, Jardy. Just kind of not even respecting this. GUA doing a really nice job. He's technically got another Divine Arrow in there. So normally the combo that you like to see, or at least I like to see, is you go auto attack, Divine Arrow, auto attack. And then that's the most efficient way to do it. You can also just do two Divine Arrows back to back. Lament Knight now coming through. He's going to have to... Okay, GUA just into the into the darkness is just like, yep, goodbye. Javelin throw as it is. No real surprise there for me. Definitely going to be the supreme choice when it comes to this Feudal Age stage. And now, on that backside, the, ja the, uh, the Javelins, nowhere to be seen, but they will probably get, they will get uh, damage uh, bonuses against Joan of Arc. So that will be difficult for, uh, for GUA, because as those number of, uh, of Javelins build up, it means that, uh, unfortunately, Joan's just going to get sniped out, because those Javelins do do, they do do quite a bit of damage. They do enact quite a bit of damage. I guess we could go with that. All right, well, GUA about to be up to the Castle Age, a landmark that we have started to see a little bit more of in recent times. It's going to be the Guild Hall, a landmark that is particularly good when it comes to late stage of the game. You love to see it. Welcome back, Guild Hall. It's great to have your company. Now, where does he put this Guild Hall with regard to resources? Now, I'd be tempted to say stone, except stone got nerfed. 
it's now half the rate of other resources. So naturally, it feels like stone is not a good choice to be doing it. There used to be a great strategy where you'd put your guild hall on stone and you'd wait until you had enough uh, to get a keep as well as get a town center and you'd hit the button. That was a really, really nice opening. But unfortunately, with the nerfs to pretty much every single stone generation mechanic, uh, there's, there's not really a chance that that is going to be happening. He will keep it on food for the moment. Gold's another good one. Uh, but I think food is probably the right call here. It can be difficult getting that food before the farm transition. So, excuse me. Uh, about uh, about 10 minutes into this game, he's yet to transition to farms, but we'll need to move out shortly if he wants to avoid that transition. Just as I say it, there she blows. So it looks like now, Jiwei outnumbered by quite a bit. 15 Lamentini on the field at the moment, yet to receive their blacksmith upgrades. On the, on the side of Kiljardi though, he's managed to pick up plenty of eco upgrades. Javelin's still teeing off towards Joan. She's managed to take down one Lament Knight. Towards that topside veterans, he comes through for the Royal Knights. Keep in mind, he's not going to be able to access that unique technology just yet in the Castle Age. You will need to wait for it in the Imperial Age. Of course, I'm talking about Royal Bloodlines. But have a look at this from GUA. This is the part that I don't really get. You're going into Arbletria. It's a wonderful unit, but the problem is your opponent's already got the counter. That's the Javelin Thrower. I would be thinking more along the lines of Men at Arms to make a bit more sense here. Men at Arms really make a lot of sense because then you can also uh, avoid... Oh my lord, look at this. A lot of Vils under here. Going to get caught. Got a raid on that other side as well. It's going to lose out three villagers down here. Meanwhile, on the back side, it looks like the Royal Knights won't come up with anything. Let's talk a little bit about this decision though. So, up against Lamet and I, Javelin Thrower. Ranged units really don't make much sense. And that's because the Javelin Thrower... Not only do the Javelin Thrower have that big armor base against ranged units, they also get bonus damage against ranged units. It's the only skirmisher type unit in the game. The Lament Knight, on the other hand, gets countered by archers. However, it does have a shield wall, which reduces the incoming, uh, incoming damage taken by 40%. So essentially, if you're doing 12 damage, that goes down to 6. And then you apply the armor. Now it's down to 5. Maybe he's got plus 2. Now it's down to 4. You see where I'm coming from doesn't really make much sense to be moving into those units. But if there's one thing the Arbolatria does have going for it, it is the Pavis Shield. The Pavis Shield allows the Arbolatria to tank up a little bit more ranged damage than what the normal crossbow could do. It also increases their range by one tile, which means you go from five tiles of range up to six tiles of range, which is the same as the Javelin Thrower. So there is a world where this does make sense, but he's got to be really careful about how he throws it down, because once the shield comes down, it can't, it, you, you can't move. You can see he takes a fair bit of damage there. Outnumbered by quite a bit. If he really wants to stick the fight, it's going to be tough for him. In the middle of the map, though, Sacred Sight's now going to start being taken. Unfortunately for GUA, he's going to throw away quite a bit of cavalry here. It's going to be two Royal Knights that he's going to lose. Just the one. Just the one. Just the one. Might lose Joan as well if he's not careful. At the same time, on that north side, Kiljardi is putting on the pressure. First TC is through. We don't see that second TC just yet. Now, one thing I would just say is you've got a lot of stone in the bank. So it's one of those things is like, what do you do with that stone? Do you go into the cisterns? I think it makes sense to go into cisterns because you're going into the Golden Horn Tower. So naturally, more cisterns make sense uh, because that's going to buff up your Golden Horn Tower. But at the same time, getting that second TC out can be a great way for you to build that win condition of the late game. Speaking of Siege, I don't think we've spoken of Siege yet. GUA. Now, looking for the Mango. Could be the thing that keeps him alive here. He's got quite a bit of units. He's going to be looking to siege down this siege workshop. Nice big heal comes through. Manganel on the back. We'll find a nice little pop. Unfortunately, it's a little bit too far forward. He didn't go towards the gold vein. Mango comes off. Hits the back line. A lot of damage over on those javelin throwers. Mango getting repaired up. He's lost a lot of units. Mango over the top. Excuse me, Manganel. That was not the best shot. New Age has now begun. Kiljardi reaching the castle age. But look at this. GUA managing to keep that single Manganel alive. That is absolutely incredible. How did he hold that? GUA with a hero Manganel absolutely demolishes Kiljardi in that attack. He was outnumbered by a huge factor. But still, somehow, he holds. He doesn't lose any villagers. Have a look at this. In fact, I think he may have lost one in that engagement. And Joan gets level two. Or level three, rather. Now we've got ourselves a game, ladies and gentlemen, because Kiljardi just threw away a really big lead. And maybe that was the bait from GUA. Maybe GUA knew if I put my Manganel in this nice little tight nook and cranny, I know that Kiljardi's not going to be able to come in here and, and, and dish that damage out. 
we want him to do that damage because if he if he does that damage, he's going to commit and he's going to make a mistake. If that's the case, props to GUA. He's, he's made the right call. Looks like now Jones got her riders out on the map. We see three riders have joined. Keep in mind, they do get a bonus damage against crossbowmen. But, of course, the Byzantines, well, it's not normally their favorite unit to be going for, especially when they've got javelin throwers on the map. I we'll have to wait and see exactly how Kiljati plays. He has he is actually going to be going for the crossbow. So this unit, the Joan, ja, James Ryder, ja, I don't even know how to say that name, man. Jeans. That's a, that's a tough name. Fuck you in particular. That's a tough name to say. Joan. We're just going to call it Joan because that's the English pronunciation. Uh, yeah, Joan's Riders. They're going to be helpful. Have a look at this though. Is it Varangian Guard time? I think it might be. You guys know I love Varangian Guards now. My mind has been changed. Initially, I was like, this unit. <laughs> now I'm like, this unit. Oh, yeah. GUA. 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 Giving me a bit of anxiety here. Fortunately, keeps everything alive. Keep in mind, he does have the ability to heal these units up. Once he's got priests on the field, also does have the monks on the field, not priests. Jeez, what are we What are we playing? Age of Empires 3. Uh, not going to work, though. GUA, you got to be careful. He's lost one. Second one might go down. Let's check in. Let's see how he's doing towards that top side. Big farm economy is starting to come up. GUA playing the French like he's playing. I don't even know, man. What what goes for early farms like this around the town center? I don't even know, dude. I, I can't. The Juicy Legacy? Maybe? Kinda? Is he role playing as the Juicy Legacy? Not really. It looks like he's cashed out food because there's no way after six minutes that he's only got 280 food in the bank on this. Let's actually switch these bad boys over just to get a bit of an idea on what the economy's up to. Kill Jardy. One villager ahead of GUA. GUA is starting to pick up relics. He's starting to take sacred sites and he's starting to build map control. All sacred sites are now taken for the goat. That is what we call him, GUA the goat. He was the goat of Age of Empires 3. Best in the business. Undefeated. Kill Jardy. Checking in on the base, just looking to see. Have a look at this. Only, only 42 taken off this stone outcropping. It's interesting that the big stone sits in the base and neither of the players look to take advantage of it. No keeps being thrown down, especially when you get a really, really strong position. Like this one here prote protects the gold. You'd look to come up and maybe throw one down on this gold here. There's a lot of good spots on this map to be throwing down a keep. But now the combo from Kiljardi starting to look really good. Have a look at this. Lament and I, javelin throwers. A few crossbows in the mix as well. You've got to be careful. The main weakness that they've got at the moment is that mango threat. Mangoes together with a Ablo Trier. Are notorious. We've actually seen them quite recently from the Order of the Dragon be very successful. Looks like the wall will come up just in time. Great timing there from GUA. Has finally realized. You know what? Walls are. Oh, GUA. Oh my god. Did you guys see what happened? Did you guys see what happened? GUA went to put a gate on the wall. The villager got sniped, but not before it could actually go up and touch the wall, which then replaced the wall with a 25 hit point gate and the gate uh, upon immediate death kills the gate as well as the two adjacent walls. You hate to see it. GUA losing villages. He's lost 12 already so far. It's going to be a tough fight for him. Man at arms. Nowhere to be seen at this stage of the game. Mangoes are coming in. It's going to be a slow and steady retreat. Kill Jardy. Wallalo. Wallalo. Lament Knight going to test it. Don't find it, unfortunately. Villagers towards that north. Villagers. Villagers. GUA, villagers. Oh, Lord. You hate to see it. Oh, GUA throwing it away. Lament Knight towards that north side. He's going to eat these units alive. On the back side, we hear the, the archers teeing off towards the javelins, and it's just not even going to be close. Now, GUA's lost a huge amount of villagers here, but he does have one thing going for him, and that is going to be the military numbers. He's lost a fair bit of range units here, and it might have actually been wise for him to pull the range units back while he actually was taking that fight. But there's still a problem. His opponents managed to sneak a couple of Lament Knight into that north corner. It's an assassination squad. It's something that GUA doesn't know about just yet. And they're still trying to work out where they should stand. Even I'm not too sure. Maybe your information, maybe you're not. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. What they get up to the assassination squad. Meanwhile, towards the middle of the map, the numbers start to build here for Kiljardi. Looking to move in the camels. Definitely makes a lot of sense. GUA's now got 17 horsemen out. 
It's a lot of horsemen up towards the north. There we go. He's gone for a triple. Mum, don't bother with the camera for now. We're not going to be getting any highlight reels just yet. Camel numbers are still building. Up to six camels now for Kiljardi. He's looking to throw a couple more in as well. Makes a lot of sense. Mango shots towards that front line. Doing a decent job of covering the Mango. Second and third Mango are on the back line. Looking to fire off its big shots over the top. Managed to hit some very nice ones. Sacred Sight is neutralized. Teardrop Shields now going to be coming in. Little bit of extra movement speed. There you go for your limit and I. Meanwhile, on that north side, the relics have just been taken down. He's got the double monastery in the back. And once again, GUA is running for dear life. He's lost 28 workers this game. Keep in mind, he was only a villager different just seconds ago, minutes ago. And all it took was that one mistake right there. And you might not think, oh, it was a big deal. It was a massive deal because it meant that Kiljardi was able to get into position. A single mistake coming out from GUA just really ruining his day. He had the wall up. He went to put the gate on the wall right here. And as he was doing that, the crossbows shot, killed the villager. The gate was then prepared to be built. It was it was sitting there. The foundation had been placed. And all Kiljardi needed to do was throw a single torch. I think it's got 12 health on it when you place those walls down initially. A single torch. And it just meant that as a result... Whoa, what have we got here? He's got, he's still got three relics on this side. Kiljardi manages to capture two of them. Or yeah, he's got two of them in the bank. So not bad. We'll check the Grand Winery. He's got one in there. Another one on the Monastery. I think he may have actually forgotten that he had the Grand Winery capable, capable of making monks. I think a lot of people actually forget that. Triple Mango down here. Manganel in placement. Actually, it wasn't even a Manganel in placement. It was just an arrow slit in placement. Did, bo did bother fortifying it though. We'll say that much. And now on that top side, the Lament Knight do finally get cleaned up. There's a lot of army back here. Have a look at this. We're talking about quite a fair bit of units. And now that push is starting to come to shove. GUA with the Manganel presence. My fear right now is that there's Manganels, but there's not much to protect them. Have a look at the size of that army coming out from Kiljardi. Springled. It's going to arrive on the scene. I don't even think he needs to worry about it, to be honest. Springled. Yeah, it works. Mangoes, mangoes, mangoes off the top rope. Beautiful shots, beautiful shots. Absolutely amazing shots. He actually takes out the Springled with... Did he snipe? He sniped the Springled. He sniped the Springled with the Divine Arrow. Wow. Okay, all right. Villagers moving out towards the middle of the map. I think a keep is going to be thrown down here. I was going to say, you probably want to move it up a little bit. Protect that Sacred Site. Protect that gold. We'll contest that gold at the very least. A really nice position there. And that's also going to intercept reinforcements. Numbers, nowhere near where they should be here for GUA. Throws off a couple of rocks into the back. Little bit of a uh, little bit of a divine arrow there, but now gonna start losing the mangoes. Get some decent coverage before he goes the way of the dodo. This army's gonna get cleaned up, and GUA has overstayed his welcome on this south side of the map. But speaking of overstaying welcomes, Kiljardi never got one in the first place. GUA gonna force him out of here, give him a little bit of an anxiety, send him off to the psychologist, say, hey, have a chat with this guy. He wants to throw down keeps on my gold. And that is not a welcome. That is not a welcome behavior. That is something that needs to be discussed with a professional. Speaking of professionals, GUA now. Teeing off slowly with Joan. We can see when you've got when you've got good micro skills, you can really make it work. But have a look at this keep. This is definitely not a an ideal position to have this keep. It's not really contesting the sacred site. And that's why this first position that was put down was so damn good. But the surround coming in from all angles. Look at Kiljardi. He's coming out from the east. He's coming in from the west and the south. He's coming in for every damn angle right now. There is so many units here. More than double the population of GUA. He's holding on for dear life, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it. GUA, a tough game for him, but it looks like this might be it. How can he possibly hold from this position? Does he have a keep in the base? You could put a keep right here. He doesn't have the resources for it. He's got 2,000 gold? 2,000 gold? GUA, what are you doing with 2,000 gold in the bank? You're saving for a house, mate. I know, I know inflation's gone a bit crazy at the moment. Hasn't inflation gone crazy? It's been wild, man. It's been crazy, dude. You know where I'm shopping now? I'm shopping at Aldi. You guys know Aldi? It's like... Uh, so in Australia, we have like these two main supermarket chains and they have a duopoly, which is like a monopoly, but there's two of them. And that, you know... They say they don't, but you just know that they are in cahoots. They're like, oh, I'm going to put up, put up the price of bread by $3. And then the other ones, yeah, look, we're going to put it up by $2.90. You're like, uh... Th then they just look at you and they're like, oh, uh, wheat, wheat, wheat prices have uh, really gone up uh, since the war. So we're going to have to put the bread prices up. Okay. 
Meanwhile, they're posting billion dollar profits. I, sh I shouldn't. I shouldn't. It, 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 it riles me up. Anyway, uh, we're going to Audi. Google it. They're, they're, they're cool. They're, they're a cool little grocer. I don't mind them. They're famous for... Uh, they they kind of just... They don't pack your bags. They just throw the items at you. Unironically. They're like... Boom, 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 boom. That's how quickly they throw it at you. Sacred Sight's getting neutralized everywhere. Kill Jardy. Taking control of this game. I've, I've just realized. Have a look at this. Um, wow. Kill Jardy has absolutely taken control of this game. Within the space of a minute, you've gone from three Sacred Sites to zero. You've gone from central gold control to absolutely nothing. Kill Jardy, despite being... Well, I actually take that back. He's got the second TC. How long has he had the second TC for? See, this is where I wish we could, like, pull up the villager graph and have a look, and it's like, do 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 Oh, he's only added it, you know, 30 seconds ago. I don't feel that bad. I mean, he's not training villagers from it. So we're just going to say, oh, look, there we, there we go. He just added the town center in. He's only just started training villagers from it, guys. Uh, don't worry, we didn't miss it. Have a look at GUA, though. How does he get back into the game from here? I think there's one way GUA gets back into the game. And it's Mangoes. And he's doing the right thing. There, I, I think when it comes to getting back into the game, the one way that you can really do it is the Manganel. Because it allows you the ability to swing a fight in such an absurd favor that you should have no right at all to win. But you've got to remember that Kiljadi played it perfectly. He flanked from the west, he flanked from the east, and of course he flanked from the south. Not really a flank, that's where you expect him from. And it meant the GUA couldn't cover all of his angles. On top of that, it also meant that the Manganel, not, was, not only was it exposed, didn't really know where to shoot at. There's no big blob, blob of massive units to attack. Crossbows, Arbolatria moving out. Keep in mind, not heavy armored units here. He's still going to do some damage and beautiful control from GUA getting in on top of it. Camel's going to be happy to take this fight, but unfortunately, all of them will be going down. There's too many Arbolatria here. Keep in mind, they do have a nice little upgrade that gives them an extra six armor. Uh, what is that called? I want to say Gambesons. I think it's called Gambesons. We can't see. Yeah, Gambeson, crossbow stirrups. That's, that's pretty much it. And then they've got the Pavis shield. Mangoes. Mangoes. Oh, you love to see it. Fortunately, he's got that little bit of extra health. All sacred sites taken. GUA pushing out once again. Got to be really careful though, GUA. I'd love to see villagers brought out and just some walls thrown down. Springled on the back. Okay, he's looking for an angle. Coming forward. Oh, it's going to be able to snipe out the Springle down to seven health now. Looking to dive back on it. it will go down. I don't know how it went down. Somehow it went down. I think GUA sneezed and it managed to get a bit of anxiety and just fell down. And GUA now going to be contesting this central sacred site. GUA, I'm going to be honest. Right now, you are the American sniper. GUA is in fact American, so we can call him the American Sniper, even though he's technically playing a French variant civilization. Manganel outpost looking to try and get a little bit of damage, or rather, rather Manganel in placement from that keep. And GUA pushing up, saying, you know what? I'm sensing, I'm sensing blood. There's blood in this water. There's no wall in the front of this base. You know what time it is, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this, he's actually brought the system towards the front. I, su I, su I suspect he's got Presidium going down here. That's probably the best bet. And now GUA moving inside the base. A little bit dangerous firing off at the town center. GUA just says, I'm going to commit here. I'm taking out landmarks. If there's one way I'm going to win this game, it's through landmarks. Let's check in over on that east side of the map and see what is happening. Oh my lord, he coming. Oh lord, is he coming. Have a look at this. 108 military population right now. Kiljardi wants to try and click up to Imperial Age. Doesn't have the gold for it just yet. Mangonels get taken out by the outpost. That's the first Mangonel taken out. Second to... Oh, he's going to get surrounded, GUA. What is GUA doing? Is he literally just... All right, all right, he's, he's there. I thought he'd gone AFK, but it turns out, no, he has not. At the same time, he's going to pop out those horsemen towards the front side. GUA looking to hold on. I don't think it's going to happen. GUA down on the economy, down on the progression from the economy. Keep that in mind. He's on two TCs. Oh, Joan of Arcs come through level four right at the last second. Have a look at this. This. If there's a will, there's a way. And GUA, his name might not be Will, but I definitely tell you what, he has found a way to pull this back. Joan, unfortunately, goes down after getting level four, which means you're going to have to pay more money for her. Oh, Lord. Kill Jardy, the Zerg player. Uh, sorry, the Byzantine player is looking to go on the offensive. Ah. Oh. Starting to worry right now for GUA. You want to know something? My wife just brought in 
a homemade pulled pork sandwich. I'm not kidding you. She literally walked in right as Joan hit level four. There's a pulled pork sandwich. I'm looking at it right now. It's made with Turkish bread. It's got cheese on top. A little bit of... I don't think there's any sauce. The pulled pork. She, she, she did the pulled pork herself. Went out in the back. The piggery. Got the pig. No, not really. I think she just bought some, some pulled pork. Chucked it in the slow cooker. She's been going ham on the slow cooker lately. Slow cooker's good. Don't, doesn't need that much cleaning. She doesn't like, doesn't like the grill. Have a look at this, though. Age up now coming through. It's going to be the foreign engineering company, so you can look to get that. Hui, hui, pow. Out. And GOA is just going to say, you know what? That's way too many units. I can't do it. I can't do it, Drongo. I'm tapping out right here. Ladies and gentlemen, go check him out. I'm going to leave a link in the description of where you can watch GUA live over on Twitch. Go say good day for me. He is a, uh, he's a great streamer, a good friend, and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.